All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about what I think are probably the top four bushcrafting knives for 2024. Now, I haven't done a video like this, believe it or not, in quite some time. A lot of people say like these uh, video ideas are very repetitive. Partly some of that repetition is due to the fact that I realized that not everyone views every video and not everyone necessarily gets notifications on every video. So sometimes there's a little bit of repetition to try to get everyone on the same boat. But this is actually a video that I haven't done in a very hot minute. And uh, it's partly because a lot of these top choices never really change because the best of the best are not necessarily rarely unthroned but truth be told that a lot of times this stuff just doesn't change too too frequently but i think there's enough change here to be able to make a meaningful video so we're going to go from cheapest to most expensive and of course there are still tons of other great knives out there i can't do a video truthfully covering like all the top knives because there's actually a lot of great choices so this just happens to be the knives that i've used and the knives that i've carried and the knives that i've fielded that just so happen to be really functional and i think are very good fits so obviously like i said there are tons of great knives out there and great options but let's talk about the top four at least for this year all right, guys, so the first one up is the Mora Robust. The Robust is one that I really don't have to explain too much of. I do actually really like the facelift of, faith, <laughs> the facelift of, this, the facelift of this knife. It is actually pretty darn good, but um, as far as the Mora Robust goes, it's just a solid knife. It's about eighth of an inch thick. It's a little bit on the shorter side, actually making it a little bit more bushcraft friendly in my opinion. And it is tough. It's sharp. It's unlike other competitive offerings like the Holt Furs um, heavy duty knife. It's very evenly ground. You have a true Scandinavian grind. And so it makes for a very solid bushcrafting knife. Like I said, reasonably compact, very portable and very usable. All right, stepping it up in kind of jumping it up a little bit in price, I would say this is, you know, about a $60 knife. We have Vera Stalika's um, wood knife. This is their Puko. And this is one that I think is definitely very traditional. If you're going for that kind of traditional angle of an actual bushcrafting knife, this is going to be of that uh, kind of way or merit. And uh, I think it does a really good job of not only looking the part and really being that traditional knife. Of course, these are made and coming out of Finland. So these are, you know, actual like Puko knives coming out of Scandinavia. But something else that I do really like about these knives is that you have a very high Scandinavian grind in a reasonably short blade. So once again, even shorter than something like the more robust, which is already fairly short itself. Um, but if you're really looking for something that's going to be an honest bush crafting knife, something that's going to be able to do a lot of crafting uh, specifically, something that has a high grind and is a reasonably short package, at least when the it comes to the blade length the handle is plenty roomy um, it, this is going to work really well for those finer tasks so honestly um, for the price you pay for the materials you're getting like birch burl you're getting 80 crv2 for your blade steel and you know there's just a lot of quality materials here so you know these are also very much handmade so there is that feature to them very cool very neat package um, you do have to order them specifically from veristalica um, and their website but it still offers, I think, a really good value, especially for what you're getting specifically. All right, let's jump up into some more higher end production knives. Now, this isn't higher end by any means necessarily in price point, but the Cold Steel Master Hunter um, is one of my favorite knives that I've picked up in the last year. And I did get it, I want to say the beginning of this year, but it's certainly not new. This is the one in CPM 3V, or this is the model in CPM 3V. And if you get these guys from Midway USA, you can find these for sub $100 in the CPM 3V flavor flavors but you can also get these in San Mai for considerably cheaper as well. So you can get reasonable deals with these knives um, depending on what you choose. And of course, like I said, CPM 3V, when you can find it on sale, is probably the option I would recommend above all because this is going to give you an incredible amount of performance for what you're paying. And so, like I said, you're getting a pretty darn thick, pretty darn substantial slab of CPM 3V as far as your blade stock goes. And then you're also getting the really nice rubberized handles that come with these guys. And personally, I think Cold Steel, I, and I say this, you know, having 
owned and own currently and have handled a lot of plastic slash rubberized handled knives. I think um, Cold Steel does some of the best job with their rubberizing. It's really truly grippy. It's not just a, you know, like plastic or kind of, you know, hard-ish rubber. This is very grippy and of course you have traction as you guys can see here over every single square centimeter of this blade. There's not a square centimeter of this handle. Okay, maybe, maybe up here a little bit that doesn't have some form of texturing on it. So it's incredibly grippy and very comfortable overall. In addition to this too, it's a very minimalist style. So you don't have, you know, like any, um, you know, jimping on your, uh, so you don't have any jimping on the tang that would prevent you from striking ferro rods. It's just a down and dirty, really functional knife. All right, moving into the last one. This is, of course, the good, the tried and true, the old school, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. This one is also in CPM 3V. Now, like I said, I've done plenty of videos talking about how much, you know, I like Bark River Knives and some people just don't and that's why there are multiple options here on the table. So if you don't like one of these, and of course there are other high end, you know, options. Rife makes some really good ones too, also in CPM 3V that are very similar in overall size, weight, performance, and capability to this. But for me, the Barky Bushcrafter has just been around for a very long time. It's incredibly functional. Like I said, I recommend the original one, not the lightweight version and not the number two. The number two is not a bad option, but it's just larger in all around proportions. And so I find that it is a little bit too cumbersome for bushcrafting if you're going for a more craft oriented knife. So for me, the Barker of Knives Bushcrafter, you know, it's a little bit smaller than something like the Master Hunter. It's a little bit bigger than something like the Wood Knife Puko, but it's like in that perfect kind of Goldilocks area where it is, you know, small enough to be very compact and very carryable, but yet not too large to be, you know, just a basically survival knife. So for me, those are my top four options um, for bushcrafting knives when it comes down to it. Like I said, they're really, really strong options. And of course, there are other great options. I could do tons of videos talking about every, you know, bushcrafting knife that I've used that I've liked. But these are some of the more recent acquisitions for me, except the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. And honestly, some of the more recent acquisitions that are extremely solid performers. And in my opinion, especially nowadays, given the fact that the price of Barkies hasn't really risen, um, to match inflation. I think that all of these knives here um, offer incredible value. Like this, you know, more robust, sub $20. If you really can't afford, you know, a nicer custom, semi-custom knife, getting in under $20, more bushcraft. If you want to step up your game, you know, once again, still staying in that about $60 price range, we have the wood knife from Veristalica. Um, you know, if you want to elevate it even further, get things that are even, you know, higher performance and you still want to stay under $100, something like the Cold Steel Master Hunter is going to be a really solid option. And then, you know, finally, if you're wanting to, you know, really step up your game and get something that is you know, nice, heritage style, something that you can, you know, pass down potentially, something like this Bark River Knives Bushcrafter would be an excellent lifelong companion. So for me, in my opinion, um, that's how I've kind of, for me, that's how I've essentially tried to make this list and have it be representative is how much value can we pack into the knives um, that I'm not just offering like the coolest, the latest, the greatest, but truthfully value oriented options. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.